Have you ever wondered why some bootcamp grads land top tech jobs while others can barely land interviews? Well, since graduating from a coding bootcamp myself and landing a job in tech, my DMs have been filled with questions like this. And I've distilled all of the answers into five essential pieces of advice for coding bootcamp students. If you're in a bootcamp or have recently finished, these insights could be the difference between still looking for a job and successfully hired. My name's Jack, and just a few years ago, I was navigating the exact same coding bootcamp experience that you're dealing with now. I dropped out of college, joined a coding bootcamp, and a year after graduating, I had successfully broken into the tech world and secured a position as a data analyst at VMware. In this video, I'll be unpacking my top five pieces of advice for coding bootcamp students so you can finally land your dream job in tech. When I was learning to code, I made the horrible mistake of not mastering the fundamentals. I wanted to learn fast, play with cool new machine learning models, and I didn't want to focus on the boring stuff like perfecting my language syntax, learning about the different kinds of data structures and when to use them, and least of all, algorithmic lead code questions. I wanted to move fast and break things, and all this really did was slow down my journey to landing a job because eventually I had to go back and relearn all of those fundamentals. Once you start getting interviews with companies who use a bunch of different tools, those fundamentals are what will set you apart from other applicants. When I was interviewing for my job at VMware, I had never used Tableau or Mode Analytics, both of which were listed on the job description as requirements. But after doing really well in my SQL and Python technical interviews, they decided I could learn those technologies on the job and they hired me anyways. As a coding bootcamp graduate, you're not going to have experience with the fancy enterprise tools that these big companies are using. In my experience, technical interviews will overlook that lack of experience if you have really strong foundational coding skills. And once you have the foundations down for your core programming language, it's time to start learning a tech stack. And before you go Googling most popular tech stack in 2024, don't just pick a new language or tools to learn on a whim. Do some market research. Go on LinkedIn and find a couple of jobs you would want to apply to someday and find the tools that they all have in common. When I was searching for data analyst and data engineering jobs after bootcamp, I saw that pretty much every job wanted me to know Python for data analysis and data pipeline building. SQL for interacting with databases, BI tools like Tableau, Power BI, or Looker, and data workflow tools like Dagster or Apache Airflow. And once I saw all of these tools overlapping in basically every data-centric job description, I knew the tech stack that I had to learn. And you can use the same approach to reverse engineer the skills that you need to land the jobs you want. And you also need to know the proper way to go about fixing broken stuff, because you'll be doing it a lot. Employers care just as much about your ability to diagnose a problem and explain the steps to fixing it just as much as actually solving the problem. A large part of the scoring on technical interviews that I have hosted was based on the ability of the person interviewing to explain their thought process out loud. This means clearly stating the problem, using first principles to break down the problem into its basic elements, and explaining not only what you're doing, but why you're doing it. A few months into my first job, this is something I really struggled with. So a senior engineer on my team told me about the rubber ducky method. This is where you practice explaining your code or your questions to a literal rubber duck that you put on your desk. And it doesn't have to be a rubber duck. I know some engineers who literally explain their code to their cats. The point of this is to learn how to explain your thought process, no matter how technical, in a way that anyone, even a rubber duck, could understand. The number one reason that bootcamp graduates get rejected from jobs is because they lack real world experience. I've helped my fair share of non-traditional students try to break into the industry, and a thing I keep having to explain is that employers simply do not care about your school projects. And I know this might freak some people out when I say this, because one of the reasons you might have joined the bootcamp was to get some resume-worthy projects. Unfortunately, these don't count. Employers are looking for real world application of tech skills. But luckily, there are a few ways to turn your coding bootcamp projects into real world experience. Take a standout project from your bootcamp portfolio. Something that showcases the skills and the tech stacks that we talked about earlier that are in all of the job postings that you want to apply to. And give it life outside of the GitHub repo. Deploy your project online for the world and potential employers to use and interact with. You can host it on Heroku, Netlify, or even for free on GitHub pages. But here's the kicker, monetize it. Whether it's a web app, a tool, tool or a service, find a way to add a commercial element to your project. A premium version, a recurring subscription feature, or a simple buy button for a digital product. This shows employers that you're not just building for the sake of building. You're creating something with a market in mind. You're thinking about what the user needs, revenue models, and scalability. And you can highlight the development and deployment of this project along with the commercial element that you added. And if it does take off, you can talk about your user engagement or even the revenue that you generated. This will go a lot further on a resume than something simply titled project. Now, I know the idea of working for free might seem a little weird, but it could be what you need to separate yourself from every other bootcamp graduate looking to land a role in tech. Tons of startups, nonprofits, or open source projects would love to have some extra hands on deck, 
especially if they didn't have to pay for it. And this doesn't even have to be a full-time thing. There are companies out there who just want you to come in and work on a few projects, maybe they take a couple of hours per week, and will give you experience in return. This is what I did when I was fresh out of boot camp. I found a startup on WellFound that wanted some help with natural language processing work and getting social media data through their APIs. They wanted somebody to help find social media influencers that were aligned with their brand. And so I reached out and said I could write a Python script that could do exactly that. This landed me some experience as a data science intern, and I got real experience with Python, NLP, and API APIs on my resume, and it only took a few weeks of worth total to complete the project. The goal here isn't to accumulate a big list of projects. It's about crafting a narrative of a proactive, self-starting developer, someone who sees a problem and doesn't wait for permission to start solving it. This is the kind of experience that really catches an employer's eye. All right, so if you're applying to tech jobs, specifically as a bootcamp grad, you know how hard it can be to actually land interviews. Applying to jobs where a real person might not see your resume, passing automated resume checkers that could send you to the bottom of the pile, and getting ghosted hundreds of times before you actually land an interview. All with zero feedback about why you got rejected. But what if it didn't have to be so difficult? Hacker Relay, the sponsor of today's video, is designed to get your resume in front of real tech hiring managers. No robots reading your resume and actual feedback from the people doing the hiring. When you join Hacker Relay, you get partnered with a recruiter advocate who gets you in front of top tech companies. You get resume feedback by experienced developers, and you even get resume feedback from real tech hiring managers who will help you craft your resume for the roles they're hiring for. Only one day after joining, I got feedback from a hiring manager at Microsoft. If you want to land a coding interview the easy way, sign up at HackerRelay.com and use code JAILBREAK for two free weeks of resume feedback and personalized tech roles. Stop throwing your resume into the black box of job postings and get your hard work seen by a real person. Again, use code JAILBREAK at checkout for two completely free weeks of access. When breaking into the tech industry, who you know can be just as important as what you know. And direct outreach can significantly improve your chances of getting hired, especially when you do it right. Making meaningful connections, understanding the needs of the company, and positioning yourself as the solution. But first, we need to talk about LinkedIn. This platform is the digital handshake of the tech industry, and it's usually your first impression to a hiring manager. Make sure your profile has a professional photo, a compelling summary that tells your story, and a detailed record of all of your projects and experience. Build your LinkedIn to be your social media resume. And now that you have a great LinkedIn account, use it. Most of the time, it's pretty easy to find out who is hiring for the job you want. LinkedIn sometimes even shows who the hiring manager is and gives you an option to DM them. And otherwise, it's pretty easy to search a company's LinkedIn page and find actual people on the team that you would be joining. You should attempt to message somebody and do direct outreach for every job you apply to. And when you reach out, be specific about why you're interested in their company and how your skills can contribute to their projects or goals. And personalization is key here. A generic message is super easy to ignore, but a well-crafted, personal personalized message can really open doors for you. I'm passionate about mental health and meditation, so I sent a message to a hiring manager at Headspace Health, and they liked my message enough to give me a phone screen interview the very next day. And thanks to my outreach template, that message took me about two minutes to write. Having a template can seriously speed up the outreach process, but remember, customization is key. Your outreach template should have a flexible structure. Start with a brief introduction, mention something specific you admire about their work or the company, talk about how your skills align with their needs, and end the message with a soft ask, either for a brief chat about their experiences or what life is like working at that company. But each message should be carefully tailored to the individual, making them feel like you're actually interested in what they do and not just what they can do for you. I get copied and pasted DMs and emails all the time and I ignore them all. You can tell when someone is interested in you specifically and not just an outcome. Hitting the job market before you've officially graduated might seem a little bit premature, but it's a strategic move that can really help you get ahead in this very competitive industry. Learning to code and learning to land a job in tech are two almost entirely different different skills. The application and interview processes can really be daunting and they're all filled with their own special set of challenges. By starting your job search before graduation, you're not just throwing your hat in the ring early. You're familiarizing yourself with the hiring landscape that all of your peers are going to have to spend months learning after boot camp. By starting your job search early, you'll learn the ins and outs of crafting tailored resumes, navigating job boards, and even figuring out what types of roles you're actually interested in. Job boards like LinkedIn use algorithms to match candidates like you with job openings. The more active you are on this platform, and the more accurately you fill out your profile, the better these algorithms can work in your favor to give you jobs that you actually want. By applying to or even just saving jobs you're interested in, you're training these algorithms to better understand your preferences and what kind of role you want to work in. This can lead to much more relevant job opportunities popping up in your feed or even in your DMs where recruiters might be trying to reach you. I've landed nearly every single interview I've had because of LinkedIn. It is one of the most powerful tools for landing a job in tech. Don't underutilize it. And to be honest, the only way to get 
get interviews is by applying. And the earlier you start applying, the more chances you have to familiarize yourself with real coding interviews. Waiting until you've graduated to start preparing for interviews is a super common mistake I see among bootcamp grads. And it can cost you valuable opportunities. Interviewing is a skill in itself, and it comes with a level of pressure that you only get used to after doing multiple interviews successfully. Don't wait until you have an interview for your dream job to learn how to pass them, and take all the opportunities you can to flex that muscle early. And the earlier you start applying, the more chances you have to do that. In the journey to landing a tech job, interviews are the gates to success. Fumbling in one of the interview stages is all it takes to miss out on your dream tech role. But the tech interview process is actually very formulaic, and there are a couple things you can do to master the interview pipeline. Phone screens are usually your first interaction with a potential employer. So making a strong impression here is crucial. Write an elevator pitch that succinctly summarizes who you are, what you've accomplished, and where you aim to go in your tech career. This elevator pitch should highlight your technical skills, but also your passion for technology and how you fit into the company's culture. And the biggest tip I have for acing phone screen interviews is to write a script. Every phone screen interviewer will ask you basically the same question. So. Tell me a little bit about yourself. This is your opportunity to unleash an amazing elevator pitch. It should be under a minute long and you should literally be able to read it off of a piece of paper, especially since most phone screen interviews don't require you to be on video. You should tweak this script for each interview you have, but I mean, if you know there's gonna be a question on a test and you don't study for it, that's kind of on you. A few other questions you can prep for are, what interests you about this role? What excites you about joining our company? And tell me about a time you did something listed on the job description. Phone screen and intro interviews are a dance. Learn the moves and you'll pass 95% of them. And click the link in the description and I'll send you my personal elevator pitch that you can craft into your own template. Okay, so you've passed the phone screen. This is where things start to get real. Coding interviews are probably one of the hardest parts about landing a job in tech and they're what weed out most applicants for a role. These sessions test your coding abilities, your problem solving skills, and sometimes your knowledge of data structures and algorithms. But the first thing you need to do to succeed in these interviews is simply ask the interviewer what you will be tested on. A lot of the time, interviewers will send you information about what you'll be tested on and what to expect from the coding interview. This is exactly what you need to prep. And if not, you can typically expect a series of lead code style questions, but honestly, it never hurts to ask anyways. Use platforms like LeetCode, HackerRank, and AlgoExpert to practice for software engineering style questions and practice take-home case study problems for data roles. And practice speaking out loud while you solve these questions because this is something that the interviewers really want to see. And it can also be really scary to write code in front of somebody for the first time. So practice mock interviews on Pramp.com to get comfortable coding and explaining your thought process in an interview setting. Tech skills might get your foot in the door, but soft skills will help you walk right through Prepare it. Prepare a few examples from your experiences that demonstrate teamwork, communication, adaptability, and problem solving in a non-technical context. You're almost guaranteed to be asked this at some point during the interview process. And another thing to consider is that nobody wants to hire or potentially work with a person who can't hold a conversation or is just unenjoyable to be around. Be nice, ask questions, say thank you, remember people's names, and just overall, don't be a dick. And lastly, understanding and aligning yourself with a company's business needs is a great way to set yourself apart from other applicants. Research the company you're interviewing with very thoroughly. Learn about their products, services, challenges, and even their industry position. Think about how the role you're applying for fits into their larger goals, and prepare things to discuss about how your skills can help with their unique business challenges. Showing that you see beyond the code to its impact on the company's success. This demonstrates that you're thinking ahead and that you actually care about the work that you're doing. These tips should get you far ahead of not just coding bootcamp graduates, but college CS majors and even some seasoned developers. But if you really want to make your bootcamp experience worth it and get hired fast, check out this video where I talk about the three things I regret doing when I was a bootcamp student. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like, subscribe, and if you want to watch another, YouTube suggests you watch this one. Safe travels, and I'll see you next time.